Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. Today's video is going over the results of the dual plane testing from dyno session number two. We're going to find out, does cutting out a divider on an intake manifold, what does that do? Does a four hole taper spacer work better than a one inch open one? Which one's better? And also, what about this little bitty guy? This is the Elderbach Performer EPS manifold. How does it compare against its larger brother, the Performer RPM? Those will be covered today in this video. I'll give you dyno results and overlays and you get to see a bunch of cool stuff. For those that are unfamiliar with the um, dyno mule, uh, I had a 406 small block Chevy built just to test different ideas, different uh, single intake manifolds, different heads, different porting on heads. That's all it was used for. Currently it has a set of AFR-195 Enforcer heads on it, completely stock. It's got a solid roller cam with a 260-270 duration, a 50,000, 680 lift, 11.2 compression ratio. And so tested with a 1,000 CFM Demon carburetor, and the jets are never changed. So here we go. In the first session, I used the very first dyno session this was used, and it's an AFR 4812. And um, that's completely stock, hasn't been altered. So this got tested again because in the first session, I had tested with some spacers, with just that spacer, and people said you should have tested with that spacer. So in the second session that you're about to see, we get to see the results. This is another rock performer RPM. Very common, a lot of guys run it. And it, from several people have said it's just the same design as the air gap, it just doesn't have the air gap. I don't know if that's true or not, but I do know it does really well. Then there's this. Of the three manifolds that are here, this one's by far the cheapest, since the Elder Rock Performer EPS. Part number is 2701. Now I have to say of all the three, this one is not stock either. Um, this one, the way it worked is a customer had ordered a set of heads for me and he asked me to order an intake manifold, but port match it. And so it's been port matched, but it's port matched to an AFR 195 eliminator head, not the enforcer. And you might say, well, what's the difference? The enforcer actually has a taller intake port than the eliminator and the eliminator is actually slightly wider. So even though it's port matched, it's not port matched to the heads that are run on, but it made for a good test. So those are the three manifolds that get that got tested. Um, the first thing that was tested was this manifold because between session one and session two, we had, I had changed the oil, and really that's about it as far as um, the engine itself. The oil got changed because we made forty-four dyno pulls on the first session and changed the manifold thirteen times. So I thought, hey, it's probably a pretty good idea to change the oil. Also, the weather conditions were different, even though the dyno corrects for it. There are some slight variations, not 100%. And I'm going to show you with this. Now, all the res results that you see here, you could purchase this through a book, which I'll talk about later in a video because people hate. Uh, and I don't blame you. Uh, but anyway, this is in the first book, you could, which you could purchase on my website. This was from Dyno Session 1. And then what this was, was this manifold, the 4812, using this spacer. So the first thing we did when we went to session two was put this manifold back on, primarily because people wanted me to test with a one inch spacer, but we tested it with the, the tapered one to see how far off it was from session to session. So if we look, this was session one. If you look at the peak power here at 6,600, 526, se session two is 517, so it's off like nine. But that may look a little deceiving because look at the torque here. From session one, you're at 521, and then, sorry, session two is 521 on torque at the beginning compared to 512. So what I'm trying to get at is the numbers are close, but not quite the same. At some points, they're almost identical. So let's look at the actual peaks. So in session one, if you look at 6200, it made 537. We can round that to 537 at 6200. Session two, it's 534. So it's only off three. Some points, like say this one, it's 5600. We're at 526. And 528, so it's like three. So it's close, not identical. Now, some of this could be too, not only just the oil change that might have made those small differences. We're only talking obviously 10 at peak here, but even at the where its peak number is, it's only off five. So like 1%. That could be the oil and also could be the oil temperatures. We tried to keep the, the temperatures for the oil and water as close as possible, but that's really hard to do, especially since the engine is half filled and the oil temperature seems to get really hot because there's no really water down there that's cooling it. So we can get the water close, but then the oil isn't the same. 
And what I can tell you from doing as much of this, if you get the oil hot, typically it makes the torque here really good because the oil is hot, it's thinner, it takes less horsepower to drive, your torque actually goes up. But because it's hotter too, the usually the air temperature the, will be hotter and or the water temperature is hotter and that causes your horsepower to be down. So I, it's just a weird thing. But anyway, those are the two numbers you can see. These are in the book, but anyway, there's get started. So let's get to how it actually compared. So let me get this one out of the way now. I'm gonna grab all this with it too and show you some of the results. So from the initial testing, so I'm just gonna move this here, was used with this four hole taper spacer. And the reason for it is on the single planes, which the majority of the intakes were tested, this dude right here was the ticket. I mean, it was fantastic. So, especially over the one inch open. So when I got to this one, I just reused the spacer. But I didn't notice is that the cone in the center sticks down above the surface. So it wasn't a big deal here, but when I went to test on this one, when the divider was in place, it wouldn't fit. So this spacer was used to test with it. So the one inch was open, one was used for this initially. So several of you had said, hey, maybe you should try the one inch open spacer on this. And that's what I did. So let's look and see how much difference it made. So this was the tapered one. And here is the open. And if you look, we went from a peak here of 534, and now it's at 540, so it gained. But let's look at the overlay, because that's a much better picture. All this information, by the way, is in the book that you could buy, so which I'll get to later. This is the difference. So the red line that you see here is with the, the tapered spacer. The black line is that one inch open one. And as you could tell, it, it's better everywhere. It, it made the engine so much better having that one inch open spacer. So yeah, it did make a very big difference. So uh, if you're running a dual plane, don't do the tapered ones. Run the one inch opens, what I could tell you. Which, by the way, it's completely reversed on the single planes. And I don't have, we're not talking about single planes in this video, but when we do them, you'll see that it's the reverse. You could flip those lines around for the um, single planes. But anyway, there's that. So let's go on to the next thing, because that's probably the thing you wanted to see was, now, can you talk about this divider, right? Because, I mean, you, you want to know. So, oh, sorry, we'll start off with the little boy here. We'll just put his numbers off to the side for a second. This was the Edelbrock, this manifold, with it cut down. And you could tell it made 543 horsepower and torque came in at 524. Okay, pretty good. This is the EPS. So this is a little bitty brother just been port matched. It still has its divider and that's it. But let's look at how close it is. And don't worry, you'll get the season overlays. It made 531. And by the way, it did it at 5,900 RPM. Torque came in at 523, 22. So this one actually is not that much more torque, but let's look at the overlay. Get this stuff out of the way. Get to the page you want to see. Here you go. These are all three manifolds. So now we have the AFR, the Edelbrock, uh, Performer RPM with it cut down, and we have this EPS. These are all of them. This was unusual. Look how much better the AFR is at the start. That's a huge pickup. It's much higher than the other ones combined. You would think, and I know a lot of you probably thought this too, because I thought this way when we were pulling it. This one by far is the smallest of the manifolds. So I was thinking, man, when we roll in, it, this one should be have the highest torque because it's the smallest runner, you know, most velocity. Nope. AFR. The AFR was actually better rolling in. And then you can see where the, even this is the blue one right here is the, this one, the Edelbrock Performer RPM. The black line is the EPS. They're pretty much tracking the same. So it's not even, even with this divider cut down, which we'll see what it does in a minute, it's not that far off from it. So being smaller didn't seem like it helped. And if you look right about here, it's see you later alligator. The rest just kind of take off. And even though the divider is cut down on the, the um, Edelbrock, it's still better all the way till right there. So it's better here. So AFR is better there, and then the Elderbrock takes over, which is about the crossover point, about 5250. 
about the time when the Elder Brock one really starts to shine more of the three that are here. So anyway, there's that. But real question you're probably asking was, what was it? What did it do stock? Okay, I didn't miss your video. What was the difference between them? So let me get this piece of paper out of the way. Here we go. Here's the stock. So this completely stock, not cut out, this exact manifold, before and now after. So the red line is stock, and the black line is with the divider cut down. This actually shocked me because I expected it to be the exact opposite, and it wasn't. Um, as you can tell, when they're rolling in, they're, they're almost identical. I, I really thought having that divider in would make the torque better here in the beginning. But that's why we test, because clearly that was wrong. It wasn't. Now, it could be the fact that you already had a one-inch open spacer that was tested on both of them, so you really kind of acted like it already had a divider cut out in it. But it wasn't better at the beginning, uh, having the divider in. But it was the rest, which kind of went completely against what I thought, because I would have figured with the larger plenum volume, because of the divider being cut out, that this would have been reversed. But it wasn't. So even though you could say, well, that's a difference between the two dyno sessions, I mean, obviously there is some difference, it still didn't close up that gap. So even if we went back to our control being the AFR, that difference really wasn't that much. It wasn't that. That's almost 10. So yeah, it's crazy. Um, something weird. Now, the last thing you probably would like to know is how does all of the, the dual planes compare? I mean, how do they look? Well, here you go. So these are all on one graph. This is from session one and session two, and I'll go through them. The red line being the Edelbrock 2701, this little bitty dude. The black one being the uh, Edelbrock Performer RPM stock. It's not the one cut down. So this is not the cut down version, completely stock. So this one's, of course, port match. This one's stock. The torque link, which you'd have to go back and watch my previous videos for. And this is the AFR dual plane with the one-inch open spacer. So stock. How do they compare? Here they are. So if you look in the beginning, the torque link sucked everywhere. There's nowhere except for here. It finally beats the 2701 right there at that spot. Yay, win. But if you look at the rest of them, the performer RPM being black here, yep. Yeah, it's, it's down from those two. So this is the EPS and that's the AFR. They're really close at the beginning. And then they trail off. Um, but the AFR is really strong anyway, because even AFR is like here, and it's second place to the um, Elderbrock Performer RPM. So looking at the start, the wind definitely goes to the beginning, being this 2701, just barely to about, let's see, look at it, about 4,900 RPM. Then the RPM is better. And the AFR is better even than this dude. So this AFR is better even than the smaller one from the beginning. And then it's definitely better at the end. So you could tell it's tracking with the red line. And then it says, see you later, alligator, with the 2701. Point being is, um, if you're wanting something for torque and horsepower, I don't let you get the EPS. You probably should get this AFR. But the Elderbrock is pretty good, too. So if you're going strictly for power, like I want the most power from a dual plane, it looks like that Elderbrock Performer RPM is really your ticket. Down low, I probably didn't give it to this EPS and the AFR. If you're racing, strictly racing with the dual plane, which I don't know why you wouldn't do that, but um, yeah, the RPM is better. But if you're street and strip, AFR. Now I do want to back up and tell you this too, because I don't want to feel like I'm leading you guys wrong. AFR did supply this manifold to me, so they gave it to me. Which may say, well, that influenced your decisions. Look, the numbers don't lie. I'm not making this up because I wanted AFR to look better. Otherwise, it'd be like the best. It just isn't. Um, but I want to be up front with you guys and not hold nothing back. It's a great manifold, even though they supplied it to me for free. If it sucked, I'd still tell you it sucked. So anyway, there's that. The last thing I'll leave you with is the book. So you've seen all these stuff. You know, like, I like your graphs, that's really cool and stuff, but I can hardly see them on my screen because I'm watching on a phone. Could you like zoom in and pause for like 15 minutes so I could see it? I get it. But if you would like to actually have this in front of you where you can look at it on your own and see it, buy the book. And so there are two books that are available. The first book 
is this one. This is version one. This has more of the specs of the actual engine in it. It has all the runs from um, the session one as well. This costs 38 bucks shipped in the United States. No, I'm not shipping out of the country. It doesn't, it's not worth it. I only make 10 bucks a book on this. And I've said this before. I'm not trying to make a fortune off the books. It sounds like, well, yeah, you are, it's 38 bucks. Nope, $10 a ship, $16 to actually print the book. Um, I'm making 10 bucks and there's a credit card fee for two. So um, point being is, I'm only making 10 bucks. If you have bought the first book, the second book, hard copy is 30 bucks. If you only want to buy the second book, it's $38, hard copy. If you bought book one, I will sell you the PDF copy. So all this is in a digital format for 20 bucks. If you have not bought book one, I won't sell you a PDF. I won't do it. So I know it sounds weird. All this stuff's in here. And you might say, why do I need book one? Well, book one has the beginning parts of the motor. Book two only has the manifold information that were in the session two. So for instance, the measurements actually from this 2701 and from the air RPM, those are only in this version two book um, because that's what was used for version two. The comparisons are all at the back too. Um, so all these graphs that I showed you, they'll be there too. Anyway, it helps support the channel because not so much the channel, the testing. Because as it stands, I think I've sold 71 of this first book. And I made 10 bucks off of it. So you math geniuses have figured out I made 710 bucks. The first dyno session was 900. Dyno session two was 700. So I'm still negative as far as making money on this to be able to dyno test. And dyno session number three will happen this Thursday where I'll be testing more dual planes. So if you're into dual planes, I've got those two. The test still as well so anyway that's the reason for the books and also if you don't want to do that you're like man i'm you know i'm broke man uh, i can't even afford a bud light and i know they're giving them away now uh, i can't afford that just like and subscribe that helps the channel too anyway guys remember i'm no superman don't take any of this as gospel that's what i mean when i'm no superman is i make plenty of mistakes and i'm going to continue to make plenty of mistakes but um these are just information. Take it with a grain of salt. Use it however you wish or just ignore it. It's fine. Uh, you guys take care.